Amen. Uh, again, thanks for coming tonight. I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter Psalms chapter nine. Um, I want to start there tonight. We've been on a series called AKA, also known as God. Just looking at the names of God, and uh, we want to add a couple more in here uh, today on the Jehovah. Jehovahistic names, Psalms chapter 9. You can learn a lot from a name, okay? You can learn a lot from a name. Uh, you know, I can say a name and it can automatically start bringing emotions to you, uh, perspective, okay? So, so when we start, when we talk about these names of God, it's given us a window to be able to see more about more about our Lord, more about the God that we're serving, okay? So, so we've been studying the names of God for a reason. We want to come to know him more. We want to come to know him more. There's much confusion today who, on who God is. There's much confusion today on who God is. So in this series, we're trying to clear up that picture, okay? And we want you to activate your faith. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And if I don't know God's will... If I don't know who he is, I don't know his will, then I can't activate my faith for what he's telling me or what, he, what he's wanting to do for me. Amen. So we've been looking at the names of God. So we're going to jump in. Psalm chapter 9, verse 10. Look what the Bible says. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. Those that know your name will put their trust in you. Uh, that word there, uh, those that know, the word know there in the Hebrew, it means, it means to come to perceive uh, and understand through instruction and experience. See, you've got to be taught something, right? I mean, if you don't know something, you don't, you don't know how to activate your, you don't know how to do, you don't have to, if, if, if I don't come to tell you if, anything with a job or anything, I've got to explain something to you, right, in order for you to grab a hold of it. But I just don't want you to have head knowledge about this. We want to have an experiential knowledge of this. Right? I mean, listen, I wasn't a nurse when I graduated in 1995 from St. Mary's Nursing School. I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't a nurse. No, I passed the test. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was a living hell. I'm just telling you, it was. It, it was. it was a test, and I passed the test, but I wasn't a nurse. I had knowledge, right? But it wasn't until 3 o'clock in the morning in, in, a, in an ER, right, when a gunshot wound was coming through the door that I all of a sudden started understanding, hey, listen, this ain't, this ain't Kansas, Alice. This is different. Somebody's life's on the line, and this is not about, I didn't, they didn't really teach me that when I took the test. It gave me the base knowledge, but the experience is what I was, that's what made me a nurse. Right? I mean, it's what, we, we've been walking with the Lord, and the longer we walk with the Lord, we ought to be understanding Him more and experiencing Him more. That's what we ought to be doing. Amen. So, we want to come to know Him, right? Oh, taste and what? See that the Lord is good, right? So, when you start to know someone by name, you can open up a dialogue. If I don't know you, Right? We really can't have, once you introduce yourself to me, then it opens up dialogue, right? So we've been looking at these names. You know, Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tire. The righteous run into the name, and they are safe. How do you run into the name? It's by you putting your trust in it. Those that, Daniel 11.32, Those who do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I like that. Those that know their God, it's going to have confidence and can be strong and do what? Exploits. So when we talk about the names of God, we're talking about the essence, the character, and the nature of a person. You know, listen to what A.W. Tozer said. The most important thing a man or woman can do is think rightly about God. He also said this, a right conception of God is basic not only to systematic theology, but to practical Christian living as well. 
So my Christian life is going to hinge on me knowing who God is. Right? That's why. So when we're teaching you this stuff, and you're going to have different people teaching you, we want you to come to the place that you remember his name. All right? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed. Hagiazo. It means to be separate, to be distinct, to be different. It means to become aware. He said, I want you to become aware of my distinction. I want you to become aware of who I am. That's launching into prayer. What if we would just stop, and and before we ever go through our list, right? We all have our list, right? Uh, We all have our list, and become aware of his name. Just becoming aware of his name. Right? Just becoming aware of who he is. And we're trying to teach you that. Amen. Amen. We don't want to forget, right? Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Right, Bruce? Bless his what? Holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. If I don't remember his name, I'll forget his benefits. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to find out, and we have been finding out, most of the names of God <clears throat> are revealed in scenarios, life, real life scenarios. When God shows up in a situation, when people need him. We're going to find that out. All of a sudden, you know, he reveals himself certain ways. In a scenario, we need God in this scenario. Okay? So life has problems. Right? But the good news, God has a name for the problems. Hey! Not only does God have, well, there's problems, yeah. In this world, Jesus said, in this world, you will have what? Tribulation. John 16, 33, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So every life problem we have, there's a name attached to it that can actually be, we can be reminded of, we can activate our faith, and we can believe God for whatever it is that he is, his name is. Amen. So let's get on with this. Reviewing from the last few weeks. We we stopped, we started talking about Elohim, right? The Elohim is the all-powerful one, the strong creator, right? We've already went through this, but then we start talking about El Elyon, right, the most high God. El Shaddai, the, the all-sufficient one, right, or the many-breasted one, the, the God that's more than enough. El Olam, the everlasting God. We, we talked about El Roy, he's the God who sees, right? These, these, this is what we've kind of been reviewing. Then we went on into what? Adonai, right? Adonai means master and owner and Lord, right? It, it's, it's the word that uh, means that someone that's, that's, uh, that's, that's ruling over your life. And then we started talking about Jehovah. And Jehovah is the self-existent one. The, the pers- it's personal relationship. This is the name that reveals the heart of God. Jehovah is God's, it's his name. It's, it's revealing his heart. It's revealing his personality. And this word, uh, this name for God or Jehovah, right, self-existent one, it's used over 6,000 times in the scripture, all right? And the Bible says this is his memorable name. Hosea chapter 12 verse 5 says the Lord or Jehovah is his memorial, memorable name. He wants us to remember him in relationship more than he does his acts. Do you understand that? I'm, I'm thankful for God's acts. But I want want you to know something. God wants to reveal himself through relationship. He wants you to remember him in relationship. God is a God of relationship, guys. And we have to remember that. God wants to have relationship with us. Now, Jamie last week talked about Jehovah Sid Canoe, right? The Lord, our righteousness, right? Jehovah Sid Canoe. And then we talked, he talked also about Jehovah Mekadesh, the Lord, our sanctification. Now, you're going to need to remember those things. Because, see, listen, the enemy's going to try to come and convince you that you're not righteous. He's going to try to come and condemn you. And if you don't remember that he is the Lord, our righteousness, then you want, you're going to have condemnation on you. Right? I mean, God sent his Holy Spirit to be a sanctifier. He's trying to take you in a process. You've got to remember, man, the work that he's doing in you, he's going to complete that work. Now, tonight... We're going to talk about two other names. Now, the Bible says some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name 
of our God. Right? Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we're going to trust in the name of our God. Now look at this real quick, because this is going to launch where I want to go to tonight. Hosea chapter 1, verse 7. Look what it says on the screen. Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah, will save them by the Lord their God. Right? Here we go. Right? His Lord their God. Right? Jehovah Elohim. And will not save them by what? By bow, nor by sword, or by battle, by horses or horsemen. This is going to make a whole lot of sense to you in a minute. We are to trust in the name, not in the natural warfare. We are, we are to trust in the name. That's what he's saying. The Israelites, listen, they had a hard time trusting Yahweh, or they didn't have, they didn't have a hard time trusting Yahweh with their swords. <laughs> Yet they had a great trouble trusting Yahweh instead of their swords. See, in the ancient Near East, in the ancient Near East, they trusted their gods. They, this is the, the culture, and I'm just trying to give you this. The culture, they trusted their gods to help them fight. Okay? Their warrior deity, their deities were warriors. Their warrior deities were expected to empower them to fight with flesh and blood, not a god that would fight for them without flesh and blood. Are you getting what I'm saying here? I might have to come down and listen. We serve a God, listen, that, that we don't have to trust in horses and chariots. We don't have to trust in natural things, right? Our God is fighting for us, but he's fighting in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. See, they saw their warrior deities, gods, as they were empower them to go with swords and spears and kill people. But this God that we're serving is saying, listen, I'm not going to save you by bow and spears. I'm going to save you by the spirit realm. I'm, I'm making sense to you guys. That's why the Apostle Paul picks up on this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, right? We fight not against what? Flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, right? People want to take matters into their own hands. How many of you have ever took, tried to take matters into your own hands? Well, praise God. There's a few saved folks in the room tonight. You're going to heaven because you're not liars. <sighs> right? How many, how many times we try to take things into our own hands? Right? Uh, or, or with natural means or with force or with our tongues or trying, to, trying to, to open doors with manipulation, jumping in the middle of stuff when I don't, belong, I don't, I don't, I don't need to get in the middle of it right now. Are you with me here? The weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. You can write this down. When we take matters into our hands, it reveals that we're not trusting in our God. Now, you need to get that. If you take anything out of here, you take that right there. When you and I are taking matters into our own hands, okay, it's revealing that we're not trusting God with our lives. Now, nobody in this room is perfect at that. But when we start trying to call stuff to happen, we're trying to go and manipulate or natural means to get doors to open or whatever, it's showing that we're not trusting God. Amen. So I'm asking you tonight, this is a question for you, what are you taking into your hands and trusting in except the name of God? Okay? Are you, are you fight, facing insurmountable obstacles, losing hope of victory? You feeling overwhelmed and powerless in your present situations? I need to run into the name of God. I need to run into the name of God, right? I need to run into the name. And the two names I'm going to talk about tonight, the first, the, you can put, actually, you can probably put them both up there for me, and we'll just kind of go. We're going to talk about these two, these two, these two names. Jehovah Nisa, Jehovah Nisa, which is the Lord our banner, right? And Jehovah Sabaoth, which is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies of heaven, or the Lord of angel armies. Why? Why is this name important for us tonight? Because we're all born in a war zone. There is a spiritual battle going on. 
there is there is two kingdoms that are in operation, right? There's a there's there's a there, or there's a spiritual kingdom, there's a natural kingdom, there's a kingdom that you cannot see that's trying to affect the the natural kingdom, right? That's why the uh, apostle Peter said, "Be sober and be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what devour," right? James says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have to realize these two names, are going to, it's, it's revealing of a God that is a God of breakthrough. It's a God of, of standing with you, over you, and fighting for you. How many of you know you got a God that's fighting for you tonight? you got a God that's fighting for you. Jehovah Nisa, Jehovah Sabaoth, this is the God that's there and he's helping you. There's a cosmic battle going on tonight. Amen. Praise God. Are you with me? Let's look at Jehovah Nisa, the Lord, our banner. The Lord, our banner. Interesting. In Exodus chapter 17, we'll go on the screen if you want to go and you want to turn there. Exodus chapter 17. This is where we see this right here. This word being mentioned first. um, We'll start in verse 8. It says, Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow. And I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with the Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went on to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands become heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on the other side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek. And his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this for memorial in the book of, and recount in the hearing of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name, the Lord is my what? Banner. First time it's mentioned, and the only time it's mentioned is right here. Jehovah Nisi. Now the word Nisi and that Hebrew word is used all through scriptures many, many times. But this word, Jehovah Nisi, is only mentioned here. Now, what is a banner? What is, what is a banner? What, what's this, the Lord, our banner? It's a flag. A banner is a flag or a banner that's hung uh, uh, fr- from, a, from a horizontal pole and lifted up high and seen from a distance. Okay? It's an unfurled flag displayed at the beginning of a, of a military action to begin a fight or attack. All right? This is what this word Nisi means. Banner means. It, it's something that's held up high. It's a flag. I got one over here. We got a flag over here. Right? The Lord, our banner. So when he's talking about this, so this banner, he said, it's something that's lifted high. It's on a pole. Okay? It's on a pole. It's unfurled, which means it's not rolled up or, or folded. It's wide open. And they would set these things on places that, well, I mean, it's re- read what, it was, what I was dug out. These were, uh, there was three purposes. To identify a group, uh, to claim possession of a space or territory as a sign of victory, or serve as an identifier for people to rally to and who you fight under. So when he says, I am the Lord, your banner, he said, this is, uh, this is the thing. I want you guys to rally to me. I'm the one that has victory. I'm the one that has victory. So that banner stood for deliverance and it stood for salvation. Amen. Stood for deliverance and it stood for salvation. See, this is the deal. Is that When you start rallying to God, things operate differently in his kingdom. See, God doesn't fight like everybody else fights. Amen. God doesn't fight like everybody else fights. 
God fights like this. Um, hey, uh, go, go put the singers and put the praisers out first. That's Second Chronicles, right? Uh, listen, you're surrounded by enemies? Well, go out and praise. <laughs> go out and praise. Unconventional warfare. So my frame of reference, right, my frame of reference when it comes to troubles and problems in my life is that he's my banner. See, I need something. This, this, this is the point, church. I need something outside of myself because inside of myself when I'm facing problems, there's all kinds of stuff that I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm feeling. I need a point of reference outside of me that I can lay my eyes on. Because <laughs> why? Because listen, I need something out here that identifies, listen, I'm getting underneath that banner. I'm getting underneath that, that th- I'm getting underneath him. Am I making sense to you guys? He said, I'm your banner. I'm the one that you rally to. I'm the one that determines your victory. I'm the one that determines how you live your life. I'm the one that you, that, that you can turn to in the midst of your struggles. Don't take matters into your own hands. Don't go and get up underneath your own banner. Right? Go get your, get under, everybody get underneath mine. Hmm. Hmm. The Lord, our banner. See, listen. We lose our battles in the valley because we fail to engage in the battle on the hill. See, this is the deal. Moses was up on top of the mountain. He had the rod of God in his hand. And when he lifted up the rod, Israel prevailed. This is the problem. See, that rod was his, was his, uh, his, his the rod represented his, uh, him crying out to God, him, him interceding. Many times, man, we get so focused on the battle in the, in the valley that we forget about the, listen, we have to have, uh, the battles going on on the hill. But we get so focused on what's going on right around us, we forget about appealing to the God that we serve our banner. We don't fight against what? Flesh. Mm-hmm. So if your focus is more on the things you're fighting than on the God we believe in, don't be surprised when the battle goes a different direction. Now that's a good word, and I need to remember that one. I need to remember that. Write this down. If you're complaining, your trust is waning. If you're complaining, your trust is waning. Because complaining people are people that feel like they're powerless in the situations. Now, that's good. Whenever we start complaining, it's because we feel powerless in the situations we're facing. Well, you notice, you start complaining, it's because you feel like you're powerless. Like you can't change it. Right? Come on now. Now, listen, what's going on? We get at work, right? Start complaining. Calls the boss. We feel like we're powerless. But see, hold on. I need a banner. I need Jehovah Nisa. I need to remember my banner. I need to remember the one that's my banner. Right? Amen. We're spending more time fighting against the natural things on the hill than on the hill with the rod of God in our hands. That's the truth. See, the rod, the rod, oh my goodness. Where's time go? The rod was, a, was on, the, on, on a rod, like a shepherd's crook. They would, they'd have marks on, on them. And they would write things. I, I don't know. Well, I killed, I killed a coyote that day with my hands. And they would have, the, the staff was like this. It wasn't just a piece of wood. It was their history. It was the testimony. See, God wants to give you a banner. Oh, you mean you come through that? Well, here's a banner. You come through that? There's your banner. Right? 
And see, there's times, see, you go and you roll up the banner and you put them in the corner because it was four or five years ago. Oh, come on, somebody. When you need to have an unfurled banner and when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a... It's my testimony. And if you don't have a testimony, then get somebody else's flag and wave it over over you. (laughs) Truth? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. See, listen. In the military world, one of the supreme images of ex of uh, uh, su- supreme images of acceleration is the sight of an army advancing with its banners unfurled. This would bring exhilaration to people. That's why when somebody hears your testimony, you're releasing a banner into their hand. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm struggling. And you give your testament how God has delivered you and helped you. You know what you just done? You gave somebody a banner to be able to wave over top of their life. life. They're a rallying point. A ra- that's what it meant. It was a rallying point. I could get underneath that banner. Psalms 20, verse 5. Look what this says. Psalms 20, verse 5. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God. We will set up what? In the name of our God, we're going to set up our banners. Right? Yeah, uh, Psalm, let's go to the next one there. I think it's Psalm, what, Psalm 60? Yeah. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be what? Displayed because of the truth. Isn't that good? Verse 5, look what it says. That your beloved may be delivered, save with your right hand and hear me. Man, the banner. The banner. The banner. Ah, guess who's our banner? Guess who is Jehovah? Nisi. Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. Look what it says. <laughs> Isaiah 11. This is talking about the root of Jesse. And that day there shall be a root of Jesse. Talking about Jesus, who shall stand as a what? A banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be what? Glorious. He's talking about Jesus. John 11. Unless, well, actually it says this in John chapter 12. He says, if I am lifted up. I will draw what? All men unto me. Jesus is the rallying point. (laughs) He's the banner. As Moses lifted up the serpent, John 3, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be what? Lifted up. See, I have to remember the cross. What Jesus done for me. That's the banner. That's the testimony. You want to know how much you're loved? Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me is love. He brought me to the banqueting table, his banner over me is love. He brought me to the banqueting table, his banner over me is love. You know what this, listen, he... He, he's, he brought you to a banqueting table. Come on. God has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he's put a banner over me. And he's inscribed it with his name. L-O-V-E. The banner is love. The banner is God. Come on, somebody. I'm getting excited here. I can't even sit down now. Yes. His banner over this table is inscribed in his name. We have to remind ourselves that he is love and he, that he's fighting for me. Perfect love. What's it do? It what? Cast out 
all fear. Woo! So why do I need Jehovah Nisi? I need someone to fight for me and bring breakthrough and victory in my life. I got to run into the name of Jehovah Nisi. I got to remember his banner, his standard, his victory. He, he's high and lifted up, right? I'm running to him. He's fighting for me. And I remember that nothing can separate me from the... Look, Romans chapter 8, look what it says. Oh, look here, on the screen, look. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? There's all kinds of things trying to get you separated from the love of God. For your sake we are killed all the day long. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, yet in all these things we're what? More than conquerors through him who what? There's that banner. For I'm persuaded neither death nor life nor angels or principalities or powers or things present or things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the what? The love of God who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you and I are going through the battles, you can never forget about how much he loves you. He is your father. His banner is over you. And he is taking you to victory. He's taking you to victory, man. Why? Because his banner is over, his banner's over you. His standard is over you. It's high and lifted up. Jehovah Nisi. Boy, oh boy. The last one is this. Jehovah Sabaoth. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of the armies of heaven. The Lord of angel armies. See, both of these two this is what's so interesting because we are actually introduced to Jehovah Sabaoth in 1 Samuel chapter 1 with Hannah. With Hannah. Remember a guy by the name of Elkanah? We don't hear much about Elkanah, but we hear about Hannah. She was barren, right? She was barren. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 9 through 11, look what it says. So Hannah rose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat, the doorpost the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Stop here a second. Let me tell you something. You may be in a rough time, but you know what? You've got to go and you've got to continue to cry out to God. Right? She's barren. She wants a child. She's crying out. She prayed to the Lord. Verse 11, look what it says. Then she made a vow and said what? Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth. Isn't that interesting? She cries out to the Lord of hosts for her to become pregnant. Right? She had to know somebody was fighting for her. She started calling on the name of the one that would fight for her. Right? I got to remember this name. I got to remember this name. We also see this name, it's like 242 times. This Lord of hosts, the leader of a great army. This, this is what this means. When it says Lord of hosts, it's the leader of a great army. It's the, the, the God of heaven's armies. We see it with David, with Goliath, right? He said, you come at me with it. Goliath said, you come at me with sticks and stones, right? David said, but I, I'm coming at you at the name of the Lord of hosts. I'm coming at you with the Lord Jehovah Sabaoth. See, God, the God of angel armies. This is the deal. Nisi and Sabaoth are, are connected because they got, both have, to have, a, have a warfare motif to them. But this is the deal. Is it's, it's, he's, he has a team. This is the deal. He has a team assembled to help you. 
He has a team assembled to help you. I need to remind you that when I'm coming under attack, that I have Jehovah Sabaoth ready to help me. And he has ministering spirits, the angels of God, the Lord, the host of heaven. We can talk about that word, and it's very deep, and it means lots of things. But when we see hosts of heaven, many times it's talking about angels. It's talking about a, a divine council. It's talking about a, uh, a people that are, or, or these, these angelic or, or these spirit beings that are, that are on God's team. Right? It's on God's team to help you. The Bible says that God has sent forth, he sends forth ministering spirits to help you. Hebrews 1.14 Talking about angels, that they're ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those that are heirs of salvation. Amen. Do you understand that you've got an angel assigned, an, at least one angel assigned to you? Matthew chapter 18 verse 10 tells us that talking about children, it says their angels always see the, the face of, their, of, of the Father. Their angels. That means it's their possession. Do you realize that you have a host of heaven that, is, that is, has their attention on, on you? Do you understand that I got angels that are, that are paying attention to me? Do you understand that tonight when I go home, that there's, there's angels that are encamped around about my vehicle as I go? Do you understand that, that when I go home today, I believe this with all of my heart. I know that the Bible says, and I can show you this for many different things, but he said he's given his angels charge over us. Do you know, I believe tonight when I pull into 477 Wright's Lane, that there will be angels that will be posted. They're like, they're like watchers. That are, that are there at the front of my, my house and, and they're watching for my family they're watching for me God has a team assembled for me he's Jehovah Sabaoth he's the Lord of God he's, a, he's the Lord of angel armies hallelujah Psalm 91 look what it says verses 9 through 11 because you have made the Lord Jehovah who is my refuge even the most high El Elyon right your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Verse 11, he shall give his what? Angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Amen. Psalm 34 verse says, the angel of the Lord encamps round about those that fear it. My encouragement to you, church, is this. Employ the right team. You say, well, how do I employ my angels? How do I employ the right team? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 20, Bless the Lord, all you angels that excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of the word of God. Hearkening unto the voice of the word of God. Amen. You start speaking the word of God out of your heart, the Bible says angels are going on assignment for you. Amen. 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 Don't frustrate your angel. Because, see, listen, you can frustrate them. They're here to minister to you, and they're waiting to minister to you. I think it's interesting because Jesus, I think it's just interesting, Jesus in Matthew, with, in his temptation, Matthew 4, uh, Luke 4, talking about Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Remember, he said, it is written, it is written, and it's written, right? And then and it says that angels came and ministered to him. I wonder if the reason why they came was because he was speaking the word of God. This is my prayer as I close tonight. We want to know that there's a host around us. And we got to know that God has a, it's, it's not just God. And you say, well, why, God, why does God need a host? Well, I don't know. He wants to work with people. He, he wants to work with, he, he loves to, to, to work with, in a community. And God has this divine counsel, and I don't have time to go through this. Psalm 82, Deuteronomy 32, talks about this divine counsel that God has in heaven. And, 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 and God wants to, he's he just showing his heart how he wants community, how he works with others, with other beings. <laughs> but you have a team that's ready 
to watch out to help you. Amen. I'm glad for an angel army being surrounding me. Employ the right team. So, Pastor, what do I do? Fear him. The Bible says if you fear him, angels, reverence him. The word fear is reverence and honor him. Speaking God's word. You're given access for angels to be released in your, in your life. Now I'm closing. If you'll turn with me or put it up on the screen. Um, 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 8 through 23. Let's look at this, I'm done. Oh my, where'd the time go? Okay, now look here, this is awesome. Now, the king of Syria was making war against Israel, and he consulted with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such place. The man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Verse 10. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him, and thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing, He called his servants and said to him, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Which one's the mole in the room? Which one's telling the other, telling Israel everything I'm doing? (laughs) One of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Verse 13. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send him and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Verse 14. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. Uh Uh-oh, verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city and the horses and the chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Verse 16. So he answered and said, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. There was a host, a host, right? A host of heaven. That was there. Now, what I like is really cool. We can read on. This is really cool. Look at it. Verse 19. Now, Elijah said to them, This is not the way, nor is this city. Follow me, and I will bring you the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. Verse 20. So it was. Now, they were blinded. I think it's what it said before, right? I didn't, maybe didn't fit. Go back up to verse 18. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Verse 19. Now Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. Verse 20. So it was when they had come to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and there they were inside Samaria. Uh Uh-oh. Now when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? This is the enemy. Talking about God doing something unconventional. Right? Shall I kill them? And he, but he answers, You shall not kill them, but you will kill those whom you have taken. Would you kill those with whom you have taken with your sword and your bow? Set food and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Verse 23. Then he prepared a great feast for them. Hello. This is unconventional. And after they ate and drank, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of the Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. They overcame evil with what? There was a host of heaven around them. God done battle for them in the realm of the Spirit. Right? All they had to do was follow the heart of God. And it's always been the heart of God. (laughs) It's not just a New Testament concept. It's the heart of God from Genesis to Revelation that he's good. And you overcome evil with good. Right? 
Do you see what I'm saying? He let the angel armies do the battle in the realm of the Spirit. They followed the heart of God, and it brought victory. And that's a great way to do it. We see the heart of God breaking through in the Old Testament. Amen. All right, so Jehovah what? Nisa. The Lord what? Our banner. And Jehovah Sabaoth, right? Which he's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies of heaven, the Lord of angel armies. Amen. Why do I need to know that? Because you know what? There's a storm with your name on it. There's a storm with my name on it. We're all going to face a storm. We're all going to face an enemy. We're all going to face an Amalek. We're all going to face a Goliath. All of us will. And we need to remember this. Because why? We need to run to the name. We're going to trust in the name, right? I'm going to run into the tower, the name of Jehovah Nisi and the, the name of Jehovah Sabaoth, Jehovah Sabaoth. And with that, I'll be able to call upon this God. God, you got my back. You're helping me. You know what? You're fighting my battles. I don't have to fight this battle. The battle belongs to you. How many believe that? How many believe that today? The battle belongs to the Lord. I don't know what you're facing tonight. It doesn't matter. Listen, I want you to know that you have a God that fights for you. Okay? He's on your side. He's with you. You be encouraged. You be strengthened. Listen, he's a good dad. He's a good father. His banner over you is love, right? He sets you down at a banqueting table. He set, you can sit right there and eat a chicken leg. You can sit there and eat chicken and dumplings right there in the, fist, in the, in the face of your adversary and your enemy. You can have peace and you can have rest because why? His banner over you is love. And listen, I know it may not be what you want right now. It may be uncomfortable. Don't jump out of the frying pan. Just stay right there in the middle of that thing. Let God do his perfect work in your life. He'll bring you out on the other side of it. And when he brings you out on the other side, praise God, you'll have a testimony. And then you'll have a banner put in your hand that somebody else is going to need a banner. There you go. There you go. Man, you come in here on Sunday mornings, everybody's got a banner. You do. It's called these. It's called these right here. Right? Man, I got testimonies and scars Right? God don't get rid of the scars all the time. Matter of fact, he probably ever, never really does. Why? Because he, want, he wants you to be reminded of what he's brought you through. And your scars are a testimony for somebody else that you're going to make it through. I healed. You're going to heal. There's a banner for you. We're going to make it. So stay right there. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much again for this great evening on this Wednesday night that we can come together, Lord. Thank you for these folks that are so kind and gracious to listen. And Lord, I pray, God, tonight that you would, uh, that you would uh, bring your name more to life <laughs> tonight, that, that you are fighting for us. The name of Jehovah Nisi, the name of Jehovah Sabaoth. You are the God, the Lord host. Thank you for the, for the A-team. <laughs> the A-team that's, that's there for me. I implore your team tonight, Lord. I, I run into the name. I trust the name. I fear the name. I have reverence and honor and respect for the name. <laughs> I'm speaking the word and blessing. And God, because of that, angels are going into a are, 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 are moving on my behalf. They're, they're moving in and, and helping me. I'm thankful, God, tonight for angels. I'm thank you, thank you, Lord, as mysterious as, as it is. I don't understand all that. As mysterious as it is, I know, God, that you've got a team for me, that you have angels assigned in my life. And Lord, they're watching out for me, my family, watching over this church, watching over these people. So I thank you, God, tonight. We may not be able to see him with our eyes right now, God, but we see him with the eyes of faith. So, God, we leave out of here encouraged tonight, knowing you're fighting our battles. So, Lord, I'm going to do my part in the valley. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to believe. I'm going to act. I'm going to do the small things of praise and worship. <laughs> you're the one that fights for me. You're the one that fights for me. 
All I got to do is praise. All I did was worship. All I did was praise. All I did, that's all I did, was just bow down. And you fought for me. You fought for me. So God, I bless tonight. Bless these folks as they go. Thank you for each and every person here. Thank you for their families. Bless them as they leave. We give you the praise, God, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great Wednesday evening. Sorry to be a little 15 minutes longer. Sorry about that.